Hello, good morning and welcome to New Forest Morphs. Today I'm showing off Bowser, who's we believe is the father of this clutch that we're going to cut today. And I've got my two beautiful grandchildren visiting today who came into the snake pit and said, Grandpa, Grandpa, there's eggs pipping and we've got a couple of little heads poking out. And you guys got really excited, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, was it the first time you've seen a snake coming out of an egg? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? And they've been my little helpers. You've been cleaning and wearing gloves and been helping me clean all the rubs. They're my little helpers. So thank you very much, guys. Do you like Bowser? Yeah. He's beautiful. He is beautiful, isn't he? And he's a real stud. He's actually 1,200 to 1,300 grams. Wow. And he's producing sperm, which they need to make eggs. And we're going to put him to his wife, whose name is Peaches. But, um... He's the father of the clutch, as we believe, anyway. So, there's a good chance that these eggs might be pied, 100% het for lavender albino. He's called a lavender albino. With a pied, is called, do you know what it's called? Dreamsicle. Dreamsicle. And you did a painting and picture for me, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. About our two snakes. Yes. And we'll show off the two snakes that you've got, which are going to be your pets, because yeah. they're going to be pets for you here when you visit. So we'll just put Bowser back. He's a lovely animal, Jared, isn't he? Mm, he is beautiful. Look how beautiful he is. Let's show him off to the camera. So this is what we're aiming to produce. In the future, we're aiming to produce some of these. Now you need two sets of animals. So we've got a female in here called Peaches that's the same as Bowser, but slightly different patterns. And when they breed, all their babies will look just like their parents. And you know why that is, guys? Yeah. They're the same type, but they are recessive genes, and when you have a recessive gene, you need two parents to have the same look to produce the baby. But because the mother of this clutch doesn't look like Bowser, if I show you the mother of the clutch, these babies won't look like Bowser, but there's a chance they might have pied in them, because the mother is 100% het pied, and she's a pastel. So we could get some pastel pieds that are 100% het for lavender. And I'll just show you the mother. The mother's called Ariel, and it's very appropriate she's called Ariel because Ariel is one of your favourite characters in Disney, isn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. Mine. Is it one of your favourites? Yeah, she was my favourite princess when I was little Favourite princess. So let's have a look at her. Now she is a little bit shy, but let's see if she'll come out for the camera and you can have a look at her. So she's put on an extra 300 grams since she gave us the eggs. She's been eating really well and she's almost back to condition in two months, which is really good news. And if an animal gets back into condition after a couple of months, there's a chance next year we could breed her again if she's strong and healthy. But Grandpa's thinking about resting these animals for a year so they get even stronger. Yeah. Because you know how it's important when you're having a family, I was saying that if you have babies after babies after babies, you can wear out the mummy. It's the same with snakes. If you have too many babies for too much, you can wear out the mummies. So that's sometimes important to rest your mummies so they get strong and healthy. So the next time they go for a baby, there's a better chance of a big, strong, healthy baby, you see? Uh, well, let's have a look and see what we've got here now. Let's have a little look. So how many eggs do you think we've got, guys? Um, five. Five, yes. And how many of them poke their heads out, do you think? One. Well, there was two actually, there because was there was one that poked his head out and the other one's cut. And you can see, look, there's one there and one there. Careful, okay. Fingers might go yeah, I'll be careful, don't worry. So, which one should we go for first? Um, one one poked his head out. Do you want to see the one that poked its head out? Now, what we've done Oops. is we haven't separated the eggs when they were born. We've kept the eggs together as a clutch. We've, let, we've, we've put them in the incubator as they've actually been laid. So, let's have a look and see what we're going to get. What do you think we're going to get, guys? What uh, colour do you think it's going to be? Um, a bit um, brown and a bit kind of peachy sort peachy of Peachy and brown? Let's see, yeah. let's see if you're right. Now, when you're cutting an egg, Mine. you have to do it really carefully so you don't cut the snake. So I'm going to just cut really carefully. really carefully 
And look, what's really good about this baby is it's come out of its eggs, egg, egg um, yolk and there are no veins. So when I'm cutting, there's no blood because the veins aren't being cut. And you can see what we've got here. If you have a little look inside, can you see what we've got? That's called a pastel, that one. We've got a pastel. So it's got one of the colors from the mother called a pastel. And it's 100% het for lavender albino, which means if it's a girl... And we, pied. Is it a pied as well? 100% het lavender, 100% het pied. Of course it is, yeah, they're double hets. And let me just open up a little bit more so we can see a bit more of the animal. And it's got a beautiful example of pastel. Look how beautiful that is. Isn't that lovely, guys? Oh, they're so gorgeous. So we'll put that one back in. So that is the first egg that we've done. Let's try, which one next? Should we try the second pipper? Yeah. Yeah, the second pipper. Now, shall I tell you how we know when it's ready to cut? Because these were supposed to be cut on 56 days from when they were laid. But because they've pipped three days early, we're cutting them on 53, 54 days. So what we do is we let the snakes cut with their little, do you know how they cut an egg? With their little tooth that's sharp and yeah. pokes it out, then, they fall, then it falls out and then they don't bite you with a sharp tooth. Absolutely, so these snakes have a little tooth when they're babies and it's called an egg tooth. Yeah, just like and it's this. just strong enough to cut the egg open for themselves and then it drops off. Once they're out, they grow inside really lots of teeth. But Let's have a look. Now, the way I know they're ready is besides pipping, look how easy they are to separate. So when eggs are easy to separate, they're ready for pipping, okay? Now, what do you think we're going to get in this one? Um, same. Same again? Do you yellow, think it's a pastel? I think it's going to be a yellow or a white. pastel. Let's see what we get. I think it's going to be a banana snake or... A pastel. Like a surprise. It could be a surprise. This is like Christmas Day, isn't it? You know when you get excited for Christmas Day when you're yeah. going to get your presents? Well, when you keep snakes, every day when you open up an egg, it's like Christmas Day. Now, what have we got, Jared? What do you think we've got here? What? That is a banana. How did you know that? Is it a banana? That's, okay, the dad is not the dream school. So we've bought a snake that's already got carrying some. Uh... <laughs> okay, this is interesting. Are you sure it's a banana? Yeah, it's a banana. How can I get it with mine? So, although we put Bowser to this girl. What colour are the eyes? Oh. Is it a no. banana? Yeah, so that's a little banana. It looks like a pastel banana. So we've got a pastel banana. <laughs> I, wow, I you, were, you were absolutely right. That's amazing. A pastel banana, okay. So that, I mean, we never saw a lock from the dream school here, did we? Well, I think what's happening here is we put the dream school to her and we didn't see a lock, they tell to tell her. But she came when she was only 1300 grams, Jared. And I took her from 1300 to 1700. And that's why I thought she'd never been to a male. So I assumed it must have been the dreamsicle. So these are not double heads. These are actually from a previous clutch that must have been bred. And she must have kept some sperm in her when she was shipped over from Europe. So did you know how long a female can keep sperm in her to make her babies? Do you know how long she can keep it in there for? Uh, for like 200 years. Not quite that long at least a year and maybe longer so when a female has sperm in her she can hold on to it for over a year and release it when the eggs are big enough so we've bought a snake that's already got sperm inside her from another male so we're going to have to speak to the previous owner and find out what was paired to Ariel so that'll be interesting because we bought three well she's a pastel 100% um, het, het pied we could if we get a banana pie so that would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think this one's going to be a little dream school, I think. 
No, the dad isn't a dream school. So what we're going to do here now, do you know what I'm doing here, guys? Because these haven't pipped. There are some veins that are likely to be under the egg. So don't get worried if there's a little bit of blood. It won't be the snake that's bleeding. It'll be just the veins. I'm going to try not to cut them. But what I do is I just roll the top of the egg like this and it pushes the veins off. So when you make a little snip, you avoid cutting the veins. But it's hard to do that. So, okay. Some people like to let all the snakes pip out. And they don't cut them. And other people cut. And the reason why we like to cut after we see a couple of pips is because some snakes get their umbilical cord caught around their necks and they can die. So if you cut them and you can see there's umbilical cord around their neck, you can help the snake recover. And that's why we do it. So let's have a little snip. We'll start here and we'll do a very small snip and we'll follow that line. You've got to guess the color guys. Um, I think it's going to be a, um, that. Banana. Um, Do you think it's another banana? No, I'm, I'm trying to. I, I was trying to I, remember I think the. Um, you the, think it's going to be an albino? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It looks first, like a normal to me. A first, the first one or something. What do you think, Jad? Can you see what's in there? Or first, What is that? It's past or something. Yeah, Almost looks like a GHI. I can't remember pastel. I, well, that, I, if we've I got a GHI, Jad, that'd be quite amazing. I was thinking about a pastel in my head. Yeah, yeah I, was I think it's definitely about pastel. It. The pattern looks a bit crazy to be a normal pastel. I see a little bit of veins, but I don't worry about that. There's tails up in there. It's upside down, Jad. Look, I've never seen that before. <laughs> That's so funny. Maybe the coil has wrapped it upside down or something. What is that? That's a bit of a mystery, that one. Maybe. We'll come back to that one later, okay? Oh, Did pee. you see the goo? No, that's not pee. That was a little bit of goo that came out. Oh, I thought it was pee. No. So let's go on to the next one. What do you think is going to happen with the next one, guys? Um, I think it's going to be... What do you think? I think it's going to be another... Um, Banana? Banana? GHI? Pastel. pastel? Pastel, pastel, pastel. I wonder or if both banana. parents were pastel here, whether or a super pastel has been put to them because there's a lot of pastels there. So if daddy banana. may have been a, a pastel or banana. Yeah. I wonder whether he's put a super pastel, a real good stud male to this one. We could be really blessed with extra snakes here, which would be lovely. So we do a little snip and then we follow the ridge line and that's how we avoid cutting too many veins. See how Grandpa does this? Yeah. We try to treat these eggs with so much respect. Let's see what we've got inside. What can we see, Jared? Can't pick up on the camera. Really dark snake. I think pastel. It's a pastel. It's another pastel. I got it right. You reckon it's a pastel? Yeah, definitely. I got. The colour is so not. dark. Yeah, I the ones that I I've been um um telling are are all the ones that are in the eggs. Yeah. Have you been guessing right? Yeah, I've just been guessing my head. Didn't wow. even know. Well done, guys. Well done. So this is the last egg. They're all quite big babies, by the way. They're quite strong and big and healthy. I think it's another pastel because that. If it's another pastel, it means that the daddy was probably a super pastel. I reckon this one's banana. You think it's a banana? Yeah. I think the same as the same Right, so we'll do a little snip. I'm most and we'll go up the ridge line. And let's see what we've got. There's lots of goo in this one, so this one might have a few more veins. So don't worry if there's a little bit of blood in this one. But I'm trying not to cut too many. What have we got, Daddy? It's another pastel. Yeah, I thought it was a pasta as well. It's a pasta. Yeah, it's got some. I thought it was a pasta. Pastel. Pastel as well. I think it's a pasta with something else. I think there's two that are pastel something. Two are just pastel. One's banana pastel. Yeah, but at least we know that the father will be a banana super pastel banana going in there. So, what do you guys think about that? Your first ever clutch. Yeah, and also I 
keep on finding all of them that are right. Well done. Really? So let's put them back in the incubator because now we've got to keep them. Watery. It's okay because now they're out. You don't have to worry about water hitting them. Now we'll put them back in the incubator. Do you know why we put them back in the incubator? To freeze them again. And freeze them? <laughs> <laughs> do you mean? To it's warm, warm them. Oh. It looks like a fridge, doesn't it? But it's not a fridge. It's a cooler we've converted into. It's got heat heat mats in there, so it's it's nice and warm for them. So we'll put those back. We'll, we'll have to contact the uh, the person we bought it from. Yeah. To find so out what's in there. We have got a surprise clutch bonus on those snakes. Now, what we wanted to do today, Jared, is I noticed you've bought a new temperature and a humidity gun. Have you got it handy at all, Jared? So let's just see what we've got. Thank you. So where did you get this from, Jared? It was from Amazon. And how much did it cost? Uh, 40 pounds, I think. And let's have a look inside. Do you know? Do you remember the make or not? Uh, doesn't say on there, does it? It's it a is a Mestec infrared thermometer. A Mestec infrared thermometer. Let's have a look at it. It looks really cool. It looks like a gun, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's why I really like it. And it's got a laser on it. Beep. See the laser? Beep. And look at the laser, guys. It's not just got one dot, it's got circular dots all the way around. And do you know what that does? It checks the whole area. It checks the whole area. So we're looking at quite whole areas we're checking. And also, if I show you what's on there, can you see what we've got on there, Jared? So the bottom one is the temperature. Mm -hmm. The top one is the ambient temperature and the middle is the humidity. Okay, and what's it reading at the moment? 56% humidity, 78 uh, degrees is the ambient uh, temperature. Ambient, and then the wall was 77 degrees. Okay, let's check it on one of our animals. So, which one this should we try? One, I reckon. Should we try mango? Back in the house. So, she's showing 89.2 on the heat spot, which is perfect. What's the humidity? 57% on humidity and 79 degrees ambient. 79 ambient. So in one hit you're getting three readings on each rub and I think that represents excellent value for money and it will help us control humidity, temperature and the area. So All well the reviews I saw on it as well say so it's really accurate. Yeah. So. So guys, for £36, it's an extra £20 more than what you'd normally pay, but you get everything built in for that. And we love it, don't we, Jan? You'll have to get a second one for me, I think. Yeah. So that's a little tip. You guys can hold that because you're helping me check temperatures and humidity. Now, the other thing is the clown clutch is also um, virtually shed out. There's only one, Jan. So let's go and have a look at the clowns and we'll see how we go. Let's have a little look and have a look at what we've got here. So the first one we've got are the two clowns together. Aren't they looking gorgeous together, Jared? Are those the five ones? So these are five that we got from our lesser clown. Uh, we've got a, a lesser that's 100% het for clown, and we've got a visual male clown. That's the one in the shed. That's the one. I thought it was a hypo clown when I first saw it, but it's actually still in shed. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, They've got pretty. very dark patterns, Jared. Have you ever seen a clown with such dark patterns? Yes. Um, it actually shows more dots, but it's really um, um, dark, dim, so you can't really see them, but there's okay. more dots around it. Yeah, that's very helpful. Let's go into the light box and show these off. Get the beauty, Jared. Now that you put them in there, Jared. So that one's a lesser head clown. You can keep those in there if you like, because they look really cool in there. Yeah, you probably won't be able to see them very well. Put them in together and then we'll take them out afterwards. Oh. They look really cool together, like they're in a bow. And that's all the ones that have shed out, and then we've got one that hasn't quite shed out yet. Lovely, lovely, aren't they? What do you think of the lesser? They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, really pretty. So put in the one that's in shed as well. 
and then we might as well get the whole clutch together. Okay. Okay, James. Beautiful. And the weight that you add in there are 84 grams as hatchlings, <laughs> which is one of the biggest babies we've ever had, isn't it? They're very pretty, aren't they? Yeah. So once they get onto feeding, they're probably going to pack on quite some good weight there. Zoom in on the close-up of the head stamps, because there's one that's got a horseshoe on its head stamp, which we're going to call Lucky. I don't know if you can see the one with the horseshoe. Mm -hmm. But we're going to come up with some names, and my grandchildren are going to help me name the clowns, aren't you? Yeah, you're going to help name the clowns? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Jared. And we're just putting them back. Lovely. And we've also named the other uh, banana spider clowns. And we've called one of them Turbo and the other one... What's the name of the other one? So, Turbo and... Harry Bow, and I think we'll just put these back and we'll show you the names of the two new snakes. I had another look, Jad, at the identification of these, and there's a, um, a breeder, a very renowned breeder, that's produced identical um, animals to us, and she's saying that they are clowns. So, I'm still... We're, we're agreeing to disagree on that. <laughs> yeah, so, and the reason was that they are identical. Now, she's either misidentified them, but I don't think so, because she's very reputable and quite experienced breeder. So I still got this feeling that they may well be clowns because also looking at the new clowns and comparing them, they're very, very similar. I'm still going with hair. Yeah, okay. We'll soon find out. We'll probably end up having to breed them to prove them out, but I've got a feeling that they're actually clowns. Um, but that's fine, we'll work it through. Good, so. I think that's about all for today. So I think we've covered everything. We've covered the new gun. We've covered the snakes. Uh, we've done a beautiful, we've had a wonderful season. I think that takes us to 60 babies for the year. We do have a couple of other animals that could give us eggs late in the season. So we'll keep you posted with that. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we shall see you next time. Bye bye for now.